you see this diamond dogs i've had this shirt for a year i had this shirt before the e3 2014 trailer i had this shirt before this thing had a release date i had this shirt before i even really knew what diamond dogs was i had this shirt and i wore it while i was watching the sony press conference to see the trailer i'm this much of a fan as you see, I got a Metal Gear Solid 2 poster there. That's like almost 15 years old, I guess. Not too many people have that poster. I'm a true fan. And I am utterly disappointed with this Metal Gear Solid 5. I'm destroyed, basically. <laughs> this game was a horrible conclusion to the saga. And the game isn't all bad. I made a video saying it's not a 10 out of 10 the other day. I, I actually spoke out too early. It's an even lower score than I had at that time. But the things I said in that video, some of them were false. I said that you had to complete the hard versions of older missions to progress through the game. You don't. You just have to do side missions to trigger main ops. Which to me is bullshit. And it, I, I'm docking at points because I had to look online to find this out. To get the true plot. That is bullshit. Gamers shouldn't have to be looking online. To find out how to beat the game fully. So here's a heads up to you. Do not waste your time on that. Because I was doing that boss battle that you saw in the last video. For five hours. If I would have known. I wouldn't have even attempted that bullshit. Because my R&D is at a lower level. And you know what? Let me just talk about the positives now. I'm going to talk about the story in the spoiler section. I'll probably make the camera black and white so you know when it's into spoilers. So, let's get right into the gameplay. The gameplay is straight up fantastic. I love the gameplay. It's the best playing Metal Gear Solid. It's probably the best playing game i played the entire year. I, I enjoyed the gameplay. The gameplay is nearly a 10 out of 10 for me. You know, just the core gameplay. The mechanics are tighter than ever. There's so many things you could do in this thing. I hear it actually gives Splinter Cell a run for its money. I don't know how true that statement is, but the game is great. I really can't say anything about bad about the gameplay, but um, Metal Gear is known for its story. I'm a gameplay fan. I play games for gameplay. And after Metal Gear, I really stopped play paying attention to other game stories because Metal Gear spoiled me. It destroyed pretty much every narrative in video games this Metal Gear series did. For me at least. So I put Metal Gear to a higher standard than any game when it comes to story. And I'm going to go into the story a little but I'm not going to talk about spoilers yet. The story, like IGN said, is sparse. The difference is IGN probably did not get to Act 2 or Chapter 2 or Part 2 or whatever it's called. And Part 2 is not when you get to Africa. It's when you finish the first plot. There's a second plot that is not as good as the first plot. But the first plot, to be honest, wasn't really there. It wasn't really that good. Kojima. Here's, there's a big rule in film and in just visual storytelling. It's show, don't tell. The Purge got shit on because they're like, oh my god, this crazy shit's happening outside. But they only focused on one house. Here you listen to tapes, see, hearing all this crazy shit, but you don't get to see it. I think it's because Konami doesn't want to spend that much money and they're trying to move into mobile. That's probably why. But I have to dock points for that. It's a conclusion. You're supposed to end with a bang, but you ended in a reserved... The story was kind of reserved. Very reserved, actually. You rely on a lot of cassette tapes and... I wish it was a little bit like Metal Gear Solid 3 where you actually got some images when you're in the codec calls. Here in the cassette tapes, they basically take the place for codec calls, but you get no visual cues or representation you know, to view this, so you have to imagine it. And it makes sense for some things, which I'll get into later, but others you just would really, I would really prefer to watch. Um, what else can I say? The missions. There's a lot of filler missions in this game. 
too many filler missions in this game. And I'm not talking about the part two filler missions. I'm talking about missions like destroy the enemy infantry or destroy the three satellites or kill the commanders. This doesn't move the plot forward, really. And a guy in the comments, he said, hey, these, these filler missions just are there to help you improve your base and gather resources. Nothing about destroying the satellite really screams gathering resources and upgrading your, your staff. It doesn't. Actually, it's, it gives you just as many opportunities to get more resources and more staff than any other story mission. So that is a terrible excuse. And Kojima, he's wasting a lot of time in this story. It's the last game in the series. He should be utilizing every single second or every single mission to progress this plot and show us a, a valid ending, which the ending was garbage. But he wasted a lot of fucking time. The story is sparse as fuck. By the way, the characters you saw in the trailer are pretty much the only characters in the game. The trailers, you could pretty much piece together the story if you analyze the trailers enough or if you watch the analysis. Or if you've seen the trailers and, you know, kind of actually tried to grasp what was going on. Um, they pretty much showed it almost a, pretty much a clip of every cutscene. Like, pretty much. Every cutscene had something from the trailer. And there are actually things in the trailer missing maybe i missed them myself but there's a lot there's some things that weren't in the thing like when snake was um walking through the dead bodies the burnt bodies i couldn't see i didn't really see that the part where um he's um kneeling with the dead body screaming with a bloody face wasn't in the game but the story was predictable if you saw the trailers you're easily able to connect the dots to see what happened the theories were right the fan theories, a lot of them. And it was just a very big disappointment because it's the last game in the series. Uh, the thing I felt about this game is if this was, if this was five and there's going to be a six afterwards, I wouldn't be this pissed. But because this is the final game done by Kojima, I'm furious because I don't think anyone could really continue his story. His story is probably the best in history for gaming until now. Um, you lose a lot of stuff. You you build up your base, and I'm, here's just a heads up. Early on, um, you're gonna build up your base, right? But there are parts of the game where you lose members, and it's fucking painful. You see your R and D go down, your medical go down, your support go down. You're wasting all your time doing this bullshit, and it goes down. I'm about to get into spoilers now, but let me segue this. Don't waste that much money on quiet costumes. Or quiet in general. And if you do, make sure you have the butterfly emblem, which you have to finish three missions in a row with ha by having quiet, have more kills than you. If you want to keep her, have the butterfly emblem equipped, I think. But if you keep her, you won't be able to finish the story because she leaves. You're gonna quiet's gonna be gone, and you're not gonna be able to equip her as a member. Kind of a spoiler there, but I'm giving you guys a heads up to not waste money on her. And if, if there's a mission that would be better off with D-Horse or D-Dog, use them. I, I use Quiet for missions that could have been better off with those buddies. Just to let, raise my bond and get those gold costumes. Quiet's a good looking character. <laughs> She's nice to look at. If you're a man, you'd agree. So I'm spending all this money making her gold, making her silver. Buying um, the reference costume. I'm not going to say what it is because it's pretty cool. I'm like, yo, I got this I got this crazy fucking gold chick next to me shooting enemies. It was badass. And I, I wanted to do a lot of those side missions with her. I'm not sure if I can anymore because she's gone. So, the, so he fucks with you game-wise. He makes your game experience tougher for you because of shit like this. This is a game, Kojima. It's supposed to be fun. Gameplay... Like, how are you gonna keep the character, the player coming back when you're removing shit like this? You're fucking with the player's save file, basically. It'd be like, let's say, your little brother or little sister comes and deletes a deletes your save. That that's kind of how it feels. Or sells a certain resource. That's kind of how it feels, but it's permanent. I found that extremely fucked up. Um, another thing that kind of pissed me off was the lack of co-op. Peace Walker on the PSP. Had co-op, Metal Gear 5 does not. 
How the fuck does a PSP game have co-op, but the console sequel doesn't? You see, um, Forza 5 got shit for having less stuff than Forza 4, with reason. Plenty of games get shit for this. Uncharted Collection is getting shit for having no multiplayer. Why isn't this getting shit for having no co-op? I don't get it. Skullface was a disappointment. He was barely, you know, present physically. You you know, you got tapes of him, obviously, but he was pretty underwhelming. He was pretty whack. Um, his motive was pretty good. Um, you know, he was okay, you know. Like, everybody in this game was okay. And as you su suspect, Ocelot is working for someone else, but who he's working for? I'll get into that later. But all in all, I give the game a 9 out of 10. It's just the story was so bad, I had to drop an entire point. Gameplay, gameplay over story any day. The story isn't going to maybe give the game a 5 out of 10. The gameplay is a 10, or 9.9, .9 because there are some issues, uh, some hit detection issues and stuff like that, every now and then. I had to drop a minor point for that, but other than that, the gameplay is amazing. The story, though, I can't even put a number on that shit. I have to put it in, in like a, in symbols. Just how bad and how unsatisfying it is. The story is so bad, it makes me feel like shit when I play the game. It makes me not want to play the game sometimes. I'm playing it, and I'm just like, what the fuck? I've become a worse player since I beat the game. You'd expect yourself to be better. How, but how the fuck are you going to be better without quiet? How the fuck are you going to be better after knowing what the fuck happened and how this series ended? It's just, I'm, I'm worse at stealth. I'm getting detected more. Maybe it becomes the game's harder. It's not even that. I'm just going reckless because of just what he did to me. And just how much of a slap in the face this story was. You know what? Now is the perfect time for me to go into spoilers. Get the fuck out if you don't want to have the series ruined for you. Well, the series is going to be ruined for you when you beat the game, but I don't want to be the one ruining it for you. Okay? So, shoo. The story was fucking trash. Like I said, the first half was generic. Remember, we thought this was going to be the Revenge of the Sith for Metal Gear Solid. No, not Re yeah, Revenge of the Sith, Star Wars 3, where we see Anakin become Darth Vader, which was a pretty badass movie. We saw him fight Obi-Wan at the fucking end, get burned at the end. No, even though that was corny, it was still badass. We got to see how he became a villain. You want to know what's the explanation for Big Boss becoming a villain in this game? Big Boss isn't even Big Boss. You heard that right. He's you. What Kojima is saying is that you, the player, are Big Boss. And the real Big Boss is working behind the scenes. So there's going to be two Big Bosses in this world. And he makes you create Outer Heaven. So you are the Big Boss in Metal Gear 1 who gets killed by Solid Snake. And the real Big Boss is the one that gets killed with a flamethrower. With a lighter and deodorant. That's what the real big boss is. So number one. The explanation for us becoming evil is a cassette tape. Which we don't get to listen to. From what I'm aware of, you can't listen to the cassette tape that says Operation N13. So there's a tape, I guess, that makes you evil. Or it's either that or he's saying that the player is evil himself. So he's telling us that we become villains, us, and we get our ass kicked by a rookie solid snake. No explanation. Garbage. Piece of shit fucking ending. Python Salkin was right. Somewhat. In my, I made a video before the last video about Metal Gear, fan, Metal Gear uh, being on Xbox. And I said the fans were retarded because they thought Big Boss wasn't the real Big Boss. Those retarded fans were right. Kojima's fucking retarded. They were right. 
in the first take of that video, I said Gray Fox, but the second tape, take, I said someone else. I should have kept that first take. Now I look like a fucking idiot. When people beat the game, they're going to see that video and call me a fucking fool. But we don't really get to see Big Boss become evil. And I personally think that is complete and utter bullshit. Where the fuck does the real Big Boss go and what the fuck is he doing? I don't know. Maybe I have to go dig back at the cassette tapes or some shit. But it was just such an unsatisfying ending for this amazing saga. This ruined the entire series for me. I was destroyed when I saw this ending. I beat I beat in every single one multiple times. Beat one on the GameCube, beat one on the PC, beat the PS1 version like three times, four times. Metal Gear Solid 2, I beat it, I think, twice on the PS3, three times on the PS2, three times on the 360, MGS4, one time on the PS2, one time on the 3, four times on the 360, four, five times. I played the missions in Peace Walker countless times. I love this series. And I could go back to those games and feel good and just play them. This one I can't because I knew because the story is a lie to me. I feel trolled. I feel played like a damn fucking fiddle. He played me. I'm a fucking villain. What a, what a message to send to your fucking fans. Number one, he makes you feel like shit because you lose one of your most valuable buddies. Quiet. You lose a lot of staff members. You have to kill st your staff members at one point. And I thought that was going to be what triggered Big Boss's insanity. But no. But I'm bringing that up because when you... I, I be, I've, I've gained the habit of using my binoculars to scan the enemy's stats. Right? That's become a habit of mine. So I was doing that in that mission. And he puts fucking S rank and A rank people in there. He puts valuable soldiers. I was down like three... I was down like two, three ranks after that shit. How the f this is not how you treat your fans, man. Making the game purposefully harder for them. It's like, what the fuck were you doing? This game's been in development since 2010. He made the Fox engine to make the game easier to develop for. Make the development process more efficient. But he's wa he wasted so much time that could have been put into animating new cutscenes and adding in characters. Where the fuck is Decoy Octopus? Where the fuck is Vulcan Raven? I wanted to see those. Or any mention. Nothing. Why the fuck was there no time skip? Why the fuck was the tape an explanation for someone's insanity? Why the fuck do I have to be the villain? Terrible way to treat your fans, Kojima. Shame on you. If this is why you got fired, I'm not surprised and I don't feel bad. Because if this, like I said before, was the fifth game and the sixth game would be the final game that explains what happens in the 90s and late 80s, I would have been perfectly fine with that. But we get no proper explanation. And I don't even think we know what Big Boss was doing behind the scenes. And if we did, I forgot. Number one, I've been destroyed, like I said earlier. So listening to the tapes, I just feel like shit. Reading the wikis, I just feel like shit. I kind of want to take these posters down because of this game. I waited two and a half, three years for this. Dissecting those trailers. Making t-shirts for the series. And... Big Boss's demise was a fucking ruse. It was a lie. Kojima, you can go to hell. Fuck you. I feel played. I feel like my emotions are like weird right now because it was one of the best gameplay games I've ever played, but it was the worst story and worst ending I've ever seen. Left a bad taste in my mouth, and whenever I play it, I, I still I still feel it. Disgusting. What this Kojima did. Leaving our fans with this. And I remember his send-off, which was a beautiful video where he visited one of his fans. 
who who died of cancer a few months before the game came out. He brought him the two the two next gen copies of Phantom Pain. It was a beautiful video. If that kid was still alive, I'd feel bad for him. I'm glad that kid didn't get to see this ending because he had all the figures, he had all the games. He was a fan. I don't have all the games. Um, the separate copies. I don't have them all. I don't have any Metal Gear figures. But I'm I'm a fan. But he seemed like a bigger fan than I was. And I'm destroyed. Garbage conclusion. Kojima can go to fucking hell. Fuck Metal Gear Solid 5. It's the biggest ruse in gaming. The most unsatisfying shit in gaming. Okay? And... The only cassette tape that made sense that we didn't get to see was Zero. Because Zero's always been an enigma. We see him once in three in the end, but that's really it. After that, he's become this weird um, behind the shadows figure. When we find out that he's been in a coma and the page and Strange Love created the Patriot AI and stuff like that. But this game was a pure disappointment. This, this is probably not going to be my last video on this. But um, I hope you felt the same way I did because I feel like shit. A part of my life, Metal Gear Solid, my favorite story ever, my favorite game ever, ended like shit. And he cut the fucking true ending. There was a, supposed to be an Act 3 because in the game, Eli leaves with Psycho Mantis with the third uh, virus canister. And they start their kingdom of young kids, like like Lord of the Flies, right? So when they leave, um, what's his face, Big Punish Snake, you go after them and stop them. And there's this thing where whenever you are, you're heavily injured in the game, um, you can't see the color red. Uh, the color red and white become indistinguishable. And there's a scene where you accidentally shoot Eli and shit. And you got a good speech from Eli in that scene. That was cut uh, about... um. His, his thirst for vengeance and shit. You know what I mean? But it was cut. Like I said before, um, this game really was dissatisfying. There really wasn't much closure to it. Um, with the cut ending, we actually got some closure to Eli. Where he said it's not over yet. How him and Psycho Mantis, uh, I think, go to America. Because it showed New York with the Twin Towers and stuff. Um, I guess after that they form the group. I really wanted to see Deco Octopus, Vulcan, but I didn't. Or or even Sniper Wolf for that matter. I would really would have liked to see them, but we didn't. So Big Boss is a uh, thing gets closed with him being kind of like a zero, you know, being incognito, hiding within society. Uh, we have no real reason why he did that. Why he um wanted to become evil the real big boss you you so i guess you're supposed to come up with your own conclusion on why you become evil but the real ver version no um yeah, the msx is in the game so yeah remember how the people were like hey it's weird having a sony product in the xbox version you got a microsoft product in the sony version too so but all in all, man, the gameplay is fantastic. Story is complete garbage. The worst ending to anything ever. Ah, I'm fucking pissed. Kojima. I was going to thank you for giving me the greatest series ever, but I can't thank you. And because of this ending, Halo is my new favorite series. Fuck you, Kojima.